Hi, I'm Faith from the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center, and thanks for joining me for today's virtual story time. Now, today's a pretty exciting day. It's Wednesday, May 27th, 2020, and if all goes according to plan and the weather cooperates, at 4.30 this afternoon, two NASA astronauts will be launching into orbit. They'll orbit around the Earth for just about a day, for about 19 hours, and tomorrow morning they will meet up with the International Space Station. Now this is a really exciting event for two reasons. First of all, the spacecraft, the Demo-2, that's launching these astronauts into space, was created by a company called SpaceX. And this is the first time in history that NASA astronauts have ever launched on a commercial spacecraft. That is something that was made by a private company instead of a government. So that's very interesting. This is also the first time we've launched NASA astronauts off of American soil in almost 10 years years. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm keeping an eye on the news. I'm excited and I have my special astronaut t-shirt on this afternoon and I hope you're all very excited as well. So in that spirit of anticipation, um, I chose today's book, which is called Go for the Moon, A Rocket, A Boy, and the First Moon Landing, written by Chris Gall. So this is about the Apollo 11 mission that sent men uh, to the moon for the first time ever to walk on the moon. And um, I thought it would be a way to just remember how people felt when that happened and how we might feel all a little bit of that same feeling today while we're waiting for the NASA slash space. SpaceX launch this afternoon. So let me, let me get a little more comfortable and I'll point out that we're joined by my kitty cat fives today, but she's just back there resting. I don't think she'll cause a ruckus. So go for the moon. A rocket, a boy, and the first moon landing by Chris Gall. The moon is out tonight. In the morning, three brave men will climb inside a giant rocket, blast off into space, and fly to the moon. And for the first time ever, people will try to walk on it. I'm so excited that I can't sleep. The astronauts are ready to go for the mission, and so am I. Weeks ago, I started building my rocket. It is small. I had to read the instructions very carefully. Everything has to fit together perfectly or it will not fly. Our television screen has no color, only black and white. The picture jumps and sometimes it looks like snow. The reporters said that the astronauts are preparing carefully. They will need a huge amount of thrust to leave Earth. Thrust lifts the rocket off the ground and away from Earth, Earth's gravity. The heavier the rocket, the more thrust is needed. The main engine on the moon rocket provides 1.5 million pounds of thrust. That means the engine is able to lift 1.5 million pounds into the air. But the rocket to the moon weighs 6.2 million pounds, or as much as 400 elephants, so it will need five engines to lift it off the ground. The giant rocket that will take the astronauts to the moon is called Saturn V. It is 363 feet tall. Look at that, that's, all, that's almost twice as much as the Statue of Liberty. That is tall. After I built my rocket, I practiced jumping to see how far away from the ground I could go. I am using thrust to jump in the air, but Earth's gravity pulls me down. The Saturn V rocket has three sections or stages stacked together. Each has its own set of engines and functions as a separate rocket. When a stage runs out of propellant, it will be left behind, making the Saturn V lighter. A lighter rocket needs less propellant and can fly farther with its payload, which is, what, which is the astronauts, their spacecraft, and their moon lander. At the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the stages are stacked together in a huge building with the help of a giant crane. The crane can lift 500,000 pounds or the weight of 30 large bulldozers. The person who operates the crane has to be very careful. In order to qualify for the job, they have to prove that they can lower a practice section onto an egg without breaking it. When the first stage runs out of propellant, it is left behind to fall in the ocean. 
the same thing happens to the second stage. The third stage takes the payload into space and pushes it to the moon. <clears throat> Months before, after it was assembled, the Saturn V was moved to the launch pad. A giant machine called the Crawler was driven under the rocket and the launch tower. It moved very slowly. It took about six hours to move the rocket three miles to the pad. The Saturn V engines create thrust by burning the propellant. The hot gases shooting from the giant nozzles will lift the rocket into the air. The engines do not burn gasoline like a car, but a mixture of kerosene and oxygen in the first stage. The upper two stages burn oxygen and hydrogen, a very light, very explosive gas. I transported my rocket outside to the launch pad. My rocket is little, but I still have to be careful. My rocket uses water as a propellant. I filled the tank, then I pumped the rocket full of air. When the air is squeezed, it is called compression. The compressed air will force the water out of the rocket to provide thrust, and then the rocket will lift into the air. The Saturn V astronauts have their own breakfast early in the morning. Then they are sent to a special room to get into their space suits. They need help. The special suitcases they carry will give them oxygen to breathe until their, their capsule is safely in space. Three hours before liftoff, they ride to the launch tower and take the elevator to the top of the Saturn V. It is high above the ground. On the morning of the launch, I have a good breakfast of eggs and bacon and my favorite orange drink called Tang. It is getting close to countdown. I need to get my little astronauts on board. The people who help the astronauts along the way to and from the moon are in a building called Mission Control in Houston, Texas. They can talk to the astronauts and check all the systems of the spacecraft from far away using radio signals. This is called telemetry. Because Earth is always turning and the rocket will be moving, they have to put antennas all over the world, even on ships and planes. It's time for the rocket to launch. I check the area for safety. No branches or wires overhead, check. No birds in the sky, check. My brother tells me the launch pad is ready. My brother confirms we are go for launch. We are go for the moon. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lift off. When the astronauts are safely circling or orbiting Earth, they check all their equipment to make sure everything is working properly. The direction and speed of the spacecraft are measured from the ground. This is called navigation and guidance. To check the results from mission control, the astronauts use a special instrument called a sextant to find their position, just as sailors did long ago to guide their way across the oceans. After they have orbited Earth nearly twice, the third stage is reignited to push the astronauts away from Earth's gravity toward the moon. In three days, the moon's gravity will be stronger. To get to the moon, the Saturn V must be steered in the right direction, but the moon is moving around Earth, so it does not stay in one place. It's like if my brother kicks a soccer ball and I throw a stone to try and hit the ball while it is flying through the air. This is how hard it is to land on the moon without flying past it. The vehicle that will take the astronauts and the moon lander all the way to the moon is made of two parts. One, the service engine module with a large engine, and one, the command module that the astronauts will live and return to Earth in. The astronauts name the vehicle Columbia. The command and service modules 
are like a very small house. They carry everything the astronauts will need on their journey, food, water, and power. They also shield them from the cold of space. Electricity comes from fuel cells in the service module. They combine hydrogen and oxygen, which creates electricity. The electricity charges the batteries on board. The fuel cells also create lots of water, both for the astronauts to drink and to cool the spacecraft. I climb through the hatch of my spaceship. Until I get to the moon, this will be my home. I bring food and water and power for the trip. I even pack a jar of Tang. A command module is not designed to land on the moon. A separate landing vehicle called the lunar module is safely tucked into the top of the third stage rocket. The astronauts have nicknamed it Eagle. The astronauts ignite explosives to cut Columbia from, free from the third stage. They turn Columbia around by using several mini rockets on the outside of the ship. Then they use the rockets to push the nose of Columbia into the hatch at the top of Eagle to pull it away from the third stage. The two craft are connected with latches. This is called docking. So here's latches, here's the command module, here's the lunar module, and they're docking, joining together. Now the astronauts can go from one ship to the other. Together they coast all the way to the moon. The astronauts sleep when they can, but it is not easy because there are many noises inside the spacecraft. They eat food that's just like food on Earth, but it's dried out so it will weigh less. Water is added from a special water gun when it is time to eat. I eat my snacks from a plastic bag and I sip my tang through a straw. I make sure I don't spill anything because in space there is no gravity. Any spills will float around inside the ship and cause trouble for the spacecraft and the astronauts. Eagle has two parts. The lower part has its own engine, which is used to slow down Eagle as it approaches the surface of the moon. The legs are extended before departing from the command service module and have large round pads in case the ground is very soft. The upper part also has an engine and room for two astronauts. It will carry them to the moon's surface and back to the command module after the landing. The next day I get to know my lunar module. I have to climb a ladder to get in and out of it. It has no seats, so we have to stand to see outside the windows. The astronauts' suits are like small spaceships. The moon has no air, so they have a special backpack that gives them oxygen to breathe and water for cooling. The suit is made of many layers. The first layer has hundreds of feet of tubing that carries water to cool the body. The next layer keeps the air inside and the outer layer provides protection from heat and cold. Also, the, seats, the, the suits are very easy to move in. After Columbia has orbited the moon several times, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin say goodbye to Michael Collins. He will stay behind in Columbia and wait for them to return. Neil and Buzz climb aboard Eagle close the hatch, and undock from Columbia. Landing on the moon isn't easy. The astronauts aim to land at a place called the Sea of Tranquility. It isn't a real sea because there's no water on the moon. To get there, they have to steer Eagle exactly with just the right amount of thrust to slow down Eagle so they don't crash. The astronauts fire their engine to slowly drop closer to the moon's surface. It's time to put on my spacesuit now. I send my lunar module module <laughs> lunar module model down a piece of string. If the lunar module goes down too fast, it will crash. If it goes down too slowly, it will run out of fuel and also crash. The string needs to be at just the right angle. <clears throat> a small computer controls Eagle. When they get closer to the moon's surface, Neil guides the computer to a safe landing spot. Carefully, he inches toward the surface of the moon. 
He does not want to land in a crater. Then with a soft bump, Eagle lands on the moon. My whole family huddles around the TV. Everyone is so nervous that no one speaks. Finally, I see a shadow moving across the screen. On TV, I hear, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong is the first man to walk on the moon. Buzz Aldrin climbs down the ladder next. The astronauts spend two and a half hours on the surface of the moon. They collect rocks, take pictures, and set up experiments. The moon has much less gravity than Earth, so an astro astronaut needs less effort to hop around. They jump like little kids. But soon it is time to go home. They leave their backpacks on the moon because they will not need them again. And they no longer will need the landing section of the lunar module, so it is also left behind. I run around the house practicing my giant leaps. With the moon shining brightly overhead, I bound outside like a real astronaut. Neil and Buzz ignite Eagle's engine and blast off the moon. Soon they carefully dock the Eagle to Columbia. They bring some rocks and their pictures with them. Then they detach Eagle and aim for Earth the same way they aimed for the moon. They use the thrust from Columbia's main engine to push them out of orbit and away from the moon's gravity. Soon Earth's gravity will become stronger and after three days their journey will be almost over. Then they will be near home. The empty Eagle falls slowly back to the Earth where, it event where eventually it crashes and creates a crater. When Columbia nears Earth, it is time to say goodbye to the service module. The two parts of, space, of the spacecraft separate with a bang. The astronauts use little rockets to turn Columbia around so its large round heat shield is pointed towards the Earth. When an object passes through at a high speed, the air is compressed in front, uh, in front of it and it gets very hot. When Columbia reaches Earth's atmosphere, this shockwave will become almost as hot as the surface of the sun. When Columbia reaches 10,000 feet above the ocean, it has slowed enough and the main parachutes shoot out of its nose. Soon it lands safely in the sea with a terrific splash. Big balloons keep Columbia upright. The astronauts are home safe. They have traveled 500,000 miles to do what no human had ever done before. Thousands of men and women on Earth help them get to the moon. Soon there will be parades and hugs and tears of joy. On this day, I have more thrust than I've ever had before. Back in Florida at the Kennedy, oops. Back in Florida at the Kennedy Space Center, a new rocket is being prepared and new astronauts are training. The next countdown starts. At least, at home, the countdown has started too. My next journey has just begun. Wow, that was a fun one. So I hope you all enjoyed sharing the story, go for the moon with me. And again, keep your eyes on the news or on the video feed on our blog, starhop, starhop.com slash blog. And you can watch the live news feed and hopefully in a couple of hours, those two astronauts will be taking off and launching into orbit. All right, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.